Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Good Monday. Morning, Virginia. Hey, yes. Welcome to the Today Show. Monday morning, self-care, self-improvement, self-worth. And uh, Virginia, how are you doing? How was I'm your weekend? Well. It was excellent. Beautiful weather. Yeah. We had yeah. a... Um, family reunion on my stepdad's side so got to meet a whole bunch of different people i haven't met over the years so it was good it was a beautiful weekend great and yeah. your son turned 18 yes 18? 18. oh my gosh yeah not my baby anymore no well, i guess not was my baby but <laughs> absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. excellent well we're here on the today show and we're uh We've got a big week plan, lots of cool guests coming in, and wow, it's just been busy. And um, I don't think I've ever had a summer quite this busy. Yeah. Uh, even clients coming and everything. It's just been crazy. And as you can see, I'm back in my office. <laughs> yes. And I thought, no, I won't put a background up today. I have my office background. So great to have my space back. I'm uh, really happy about that. We house cleaned. Oh, yeah. The ups, the, the main part of the house took up all the rugs, vacuumed, scrubbed, sanitized, rearranged. I had purchased some purchased some new rugs because we just had older ones that we brought with us. So mm -hmm. it looks pretty cool. So that's what I did yesterday. I was house cleaning. <laughs> yeah, and it feels good when you do that, doesn't it? Yeah, when start the week fresh. That's right. When you tidy yeah. up and you get rid of crap, yes. rid of trash. Yeah. All right. Well, last week, if you missed the show or you weren't <laughs> here, we did a, a commentary on the difference between guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. And we also mentioned that as women, we have two extra chromosomes. One is called guilt and the other is called on sale. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, because, you know, sometimes we have people try to make us feel guilty over stuff. Have you mm -hmm. ever had that experience? Oh, when has oh. somebody made us feel guilty? But in fact, we're the only ones that can inflict the guilt. But, um, yeah, let's see. When did anybody make me feel guilty? Lots, lots, lots <laughs> of times. Mm -hmm. Yes. Too many to mention. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, look who's here, our friend. Kathy. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Kathy. Yeah, so um, let's see. Do you want to just read the first list um, and uh, just kind of briefly summarize, just go over each one for us, and then we'll get into some stories Perfect. for the second half, all right? Perfect. So the first oh. one we ran through, I feel there's something wrong with me. I find it hard to have eye contact, hugs, physical contact. I get defensive if I'm corrected. I speak negatively about myself. I strive in an attempt to get approval from others. I find it difficult to accept compliments. Mm -hmm. I find it difficult to trust. I have a fear of failure and or success. I think the worst is about to happen. I lack boundaries and I find it hard to say no. I reject others before they reject me. I am performance oriented and I would blame others as a way to defend myself. That was our first 13. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these behaviors, attitudes or beliefs are all rooted in shame. Mm -hmm. And remember, shame is when we take something on or, or we're, we're given a label, um, we feel ashamed of ourselves because we did certain things. Yeah. We have regrets from the past. All right. So let's get started on list number two. What's number the first two, one? Today? The first one. I am frequently in crisis and drama mode. Oh, do we know anybody like that? Oh my gosh. They're too close to home. 
Yes. <clears throat> right? Very. And, yes. Uh, yes. We know each other's stories, so we don't even have yeah. to go there. But no. <laughs> I know people who, if they're not in a crisis, they create one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's called survival. Survival. It's always feeling like you have to be, oh, there's there's so much energy that goes into that. It's exhausting. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The energy that it's goes exhausting. into create, first of all, creating the crises because we make poor decisions or we didn't pay attention or we didn't listen to being in the crises. But you yeah. know, Virginia, my self-worth was so in the ditch. The only way I could validate myself was to create a crisis, get through it. And then I could go, Oh, at a girl, look at you. Look at you go. <laughs> I did it. Strong, right? Yeah. yeah. That was the only way I knew how to validate myself. Yeah. Now there's something wrong with that picture. What about but you? If you don't know, you don't know. That's right. No, I don't. I don't like, I am not a big fan of drama. I try and no. avoid it as, as much as I can. It, I think when you grow up in a household where there is frequent drama, uh, as an adult, that's something I, you know, you try and seek out peace. Um, you know, even though you're, you're going through your own, you know, battling your own demons, going through your own traumas and stuff. Yeah. Drama is something mm -hmm. I try and I like yeah. to watch it on TV. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even then yeah. it can be a little, a, a little, little much. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get you to sit uh, closer to your laptop because they're just yeah. a little fuzzy when you back up. You know, you okay. might have to stay still. Okay. okay. Here we go. All right. Next one. Number 15. I need to be right. Oh, that was a personal favorite of mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Even when I knew I was wrong. I would be able to convince you I was right because it was so important for me to be right. You see the reasoning behind that? Because when we are, when we made mistakes maybe as children and the way that got punished or mm -hmm. um, out of a fear. And I also, I, I think my career helped that along the way too, because I was a teacher. So we had all the answers or we were led to believe that we were supposed to have all the answers. Yes. And we don't, right? So no. nobody does. What a, no, no, no. What about you? Have you ever had that experience or that's not you? Some, I think sometimes when my husband and I banter, I feel like I need to be right. <laughs> and he yes. would say, he would say the same thing. I even have a coffee cup that says, I may be wrong, but I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's a good one. So yeah, yeah that would be probably okay. sometimes for me. Yeah, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a good feeling when you're right. You know, I, I still get a nice little rush if I if I've made a decision and it was the right one. Yes. Um, you know, it feels good to be right. Yeah, but absolutely. we can't be right all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. Number 16. I need to be dependent on others. Oh, yeah. This is the 40-year-old who still hasn't left home. <laughs> <laughs> well, just a joke around that. But yes, not, uh, not believing or knowing that you can make it on your own. Mm -hmm. And always having to have others support you. Um depend on others you know at, I was left alone very young at 34 and I thought I was married and I thought wow am I gonna am I gonna function here I've always had a family around me I was yeah. married young um, but I made out just fine five years on my own and then of course that taught me that I don't need to be dependent I am dependent because I need the support of others but it's not because I need that. Now, what a great feeling that was to know that I could function by myself. What yeah. And you? there's nothing wrong, you know, especially when you're going through something that you might 
not have a choice but to be dependent on others um, and right. like you said, there's that difference, right? That difference where you have that fear to step out and be on your own. Um, whereas, you know, going through the cancer, you know, I don't have a choice sometimes, but to be dependent on others, because there's just things that I, I'm not able to do now. So right. it's, it's, you know, get building your strength back up and building your endurance. And, you know, uh -huh. so yeah, there's absolutely a difference. There's a difference, you know, between that you know, it's, it's a choice, I guess, when you're choosing not to try and you're choosing not to move on, uh -huh. you know, whereas when that choice is in a sense taken away for certain things, then yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I, and I believe that, um, we're talking about codependency mm -hmm. being needy and yeah. having to have that, uh, support even if you don't need it you're still well it's like the 40 year old who hasn't left home exactly. a failed to failure to fail failure to launch team. right <laughs> yes yeah that's a good one yeah and oh, no. <laughs> depending on parents and uh you know yeah not being very grown up okay next one number 17 i have difficulty making decisions good one mm -hmm. yeah yeah and to there's a variety of ways uh, well this would be a good time to explain the difference between choices and decisions mm -hmm. you know how people will say well i just didn't really have a choice uh yeah you did but what you failed to do was make a decision see choices are another word for choices would be options and i like to use my sample of going to a Chinese food buffet and you have wonton soup, you have spring rolls, you have rice, you have, those are called choices. Mm -hmm. But until you take your plate and go up and choose something and take yeah. action, that's the decision. I'm deciding to have the rice. I'm deciding to have the soup. Yeah. And let's look at how people make decisions. There's three or four different ways. One, you have you can make an impulsive decision. Have you ever been shopping? <laughs> if you've been shopping, you've made impulsive decisions. Oh, yes. Um, mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And because it was on sale and that chromosome kicked in. Um, so there's that. Uh, also, too, that's a behavior that comes along with addictions because um, a mm -hmm. lot of times when you're when you have addictions, you know, you develop that impulsive type of decision making. Yes. Uh, then there's maybe you're the researcher. Mm. <laughs> so you're going to buy a blender, but you get on the internet and you look and you research all the colors and the prices and you just have to know which one. And six months later, you still don't have a blender. That's the researcher has to have all the questions answered. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, that decision maker that uses their guts. If it feels good, if it feels mm -hmm. right, that's your intuition or your, your guts, we call it talking yeah. to you. Right. Yeah. And then what I do now is I've been all those, I've done all those, but, now, if something is presented to me, I sleep on it. And then if mm. I get up the next morning and I still feel the same way about it, then I know it's a good decision. Mm, if I wake one. up and I don't feel good about it, then I know it's not. So that's kind of how I make decisions mm -hmm. now. Perfect. Have you ever been any of the above? Oh, absolutely. Maker? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Impulsive mm -hmm. for sure. Um, <clears throat> dealing with addictions, absolutely. Research. Uh, I guess I do more research. Like if I'm going to go somewhere, I want to know what my options are to go. Right? What? I, oh. And my gut. I do follow my gut more because I think not following my gut in the past has got me into trouble. Right. Right. Um, but I like that sleep on it. I like that one. That's a good one. Yeah, I give it 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I just let it percolate and 
don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about it or overthinking. Yeah. Just let it, just let it sit there. Yeah. Overnight. Right on. Like that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a little break, a little Perfect. 30 second break. And this is where, if you would like to be featured on our show, uh, we have some advertisers coming. We're just getting in prep for their broadcast. And so, um, yeah, if you want to, uh, be part of the show, we have got a heck of a deal on and you can contact me and I'll get you in the, in the place here. So here we go. Can I actually say a lot in 30 seconds. The day is set. Join us October 12th, 2024 at Kerrigan Arms for our next fundraiser in honor of veterans, the Invictus Games in British Columbia, Canada, and TDC Employment Program Enrollment. For more information, email us at info at the disabilitychannel.ca. We welcome you to advertise and promote your goods and services and or brand your logo to 34 million subscribers on Canada Talks 167. Your investment will go towards our employment programs in the media industry for persons with disabilities and veterans. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching the Today Show here on the Disability Channel. And of course, Monday is always about self-improvement, self-care, and actually... Virginia and I had a bit of a laugh at the beginning of the show because we both decided to go with Prince today <laughs> and we never even talked about it. No. And I see there's some other people watching the show. So if you're here and you want to make a comment, please do that so we can acknowledge that you're here. Mm -hmm. Kathy said, um, me too. She said, it's funny that how the brain comes up with the answer. Well, that's for sure when you make a decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a little thing about the brain though. The brain wants us to do things right and perfectly. The heart wants us to do the right thing. Mm, so I used to be in conflict over that because I was always, a, you know, I had become a perfectionist and I wanted everything to be perfect and I always wanted to be right. But then when I switched it, not to be concerned about that, but be concerned about doing the right thing, made a big difference for me. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's, I like that. All right, this one's going to uh, make a lot of people think. I think this next one, I do not love myself. <sighs> wow, yes. that was big for us. Mm -hmm. Huge. Yeah. Exactly. Because really, when we're growing up, people are all too anxious to point out the flaws. More about what's wrong with us than what's right about us. Yeah. And so after a while, we learn not to like ourselves very much. And then we start doing things that we don't like. And can't even believe that we just did that because that's not who we really are. So lack of self-love, loving Falling in, you know, I, I said to somebody the other day, I'm looking so hot these days, I take myself out on a date. <laughs> well, and you should, absolutely. Well, I should, right? No, there's nothing yeah. wrong with going, uh -huh. out, going out by yourself. Absolutely not. No. Yeah. If you enjoy your exactly. own company. Yeah, that was a tough one. Um, because you're right. When we do things that, go against you know like you said your heart doing the right thing and you know um or yeah that always in someone in your ear you could do better you could do this or do that or yeah it's it's a, that's a tough one i think a lot of people are going to struggle with that one um when they're answering because we said yes no or sometimes do you you know feel like you don't love yourself uh -huh. so, well you beyond, see it all yeah. Sorry, Virginia. Yeah. No, that's all right. Be honest because you're not going to learn and not going to grow if you can't be honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it all begins in the kindergarten. Mm -hmm. I taught kindergarten, you know, for six years. That was my first grade that I taught. Yeah. And it all starts there with getting the right answer, uh, coloring the best picture, 
Mm -hmm. uh, comparing ourselves to others in the room. When you get into that kind of environment where you've got a room full of people, we automatically go there and start judging ourselves. So it all, it's all programmed in. So we have to change the tapes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we really can't not effectively love others if we don't love ourselves first. And I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. And if right. I don't love myself, oh, sorry, just one more yep. thing. And if I don't love myself and I treat myself poorly, that gives other people permission to do the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the next one we have, I find my identity in others. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what does that mean? Well, it means the following. You don't have your own identity, but you have to wrap yourself around another individual, whether it's your husband or uh, your boss. Or And um, I had a girlfriend one time, every time we go somewhere, her dad was very well known in the, in the town where she lived. And she would always say, hi, you know, I'm Sue. You know, uh, Bill Smith, you know, Bill Smith? Well, he's my, he's my brother the big contractor gotcha. name dropping when people name drop a lot, it's because they have no, they don't have their own identity. They, their identity is because I know the, the, you know, the mayor of the town or I'm the mayor's wife or, mm -hmm. you know, I always, I always including another person when you're really needing to um, just be talking with by yourself. Yeah. And you've taught us when we are identifying ourselves, I am Virginia Clark. End uh -huh. of story. Uh -huh. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Not I am Virginia Clark and my dad is the mayor of Toronto or <laughs> Montreal or wherever or New York, whatever. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. <clears throat> oh, you like the next one. I am a perfectionist or an overachiever. Oh, gee, <laughs> there was my life. Honestly, Virginia, if you were coming to supper, it would have taken me three weeks to get ready for you. I'm serious. Yeah. I'd set the table and then I wouldn't like it. And I would think that maybe you wouldn't like the color of the tablecloth. And I went into all this. My gosh, I could have had four more businesses. <laughs> With now, the time. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. think if people don't look at it that way as realizing that that is a trauma response uh -huh. um, to be a perfectionist or an overachiever. And again, we talk a lot about our childhoods, but that it brings it up again. How many times were you told, you know, blah, 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 or I expect A's or I expect this or so you have that in your mind. Well, if I if I don't get this, then I'm going to be a disappointment. Uh -huh. So all of a sudden now you're I have to do more, I have to do better, I have to do this. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a trauma response. Absolutely. And, and also a fear of um, other people judging us or disapproving. Mm -hmm. We probably, you know, when you had a lot of that, it, you do things to avoid it. You put energy into things so that doesn't happen because it hurts too much. Mm -hmm. And I found for me as a kid, I honestly, I just went the other way. I, uh -huh. I just felt like I'm never going to live up to those expectations anyway. So I was an underachiever. Okay. Under, absolutely. Could have cared less. Yeah, I skated through high school and I know that I'm smarter than that mm -hmm. right but for for me that's I just went completely opposite the other way just yeah yeah, yeah. and it can work it can work both ways absolutely and still be that like you said uh trauma release mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay I feel safe in hiding or being secretive. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are the people who say to you, you know, this is how they justify. 
you know, I'm just a very private person. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> You've got secrets. Yeah. And we're only, we'll only ever be as sick as our secrets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when, what are some ways that people hide? And we're not talking about hiding in a closet necessarily. What, how do people hide? What, what do they hide behind? Well, I used to hide behind my, my nice clothes or mm -hmm. church or what do people hide behind? Even just there, you could hide behind your family. That's true. You know, um, you can hide behind, like you said, your, your, your makeup, your, you know, having to leave the house with all your makeup done, your hair done, dress nice. You know, you can't mm -hmm. leave the house. You can't be vulnerable. Right. You're not giving yourself that permission to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, if you're always in hiding and always being secretive. Yeah. Right. And private. Yes. Yeah. And private. And I mm -hmm. mean, there's, yes, there is things that you can have privacy about. Um, you don't have to have your whole life wide open. You know? No, so that's right. Some no, people no. maybe share a little too much on Facebook or, you know what I mean? Stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, mm -hmm. That's different. It's when you're using it as a coping mechanism mm -hmm. and it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Number 22. We're almost to the end. Uh -huh. Now this, this one could be a trigger. So I'm just putting that out there first. I have had suicidal thoughts, a plan or an action. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. We could spend a lot of time on that. We could actually do a show on suicide. I'd like to do a show on suicide. I have my own ideas around it. Mm -hmm. Having had personal experience, not myself personally, but my husband, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> my first husband. And I know that when we have lost all hope of loving myself, yeah. not necessarily hope in the world or bad things going on around me, but when I've lost my ability to love me, that will come into play because my, I know this because my first husband used to say to me, you know, I, I, I just hate myself. Mm. And I'd say, well, why you, you know, you've got a great job. We've got a lovely life, all that and a bag of chips. And then he'd say things like, I don't deserve you. Mm. Ooh. Now that didn't ring for me back in the day, but now that I think about it, that was big. That was a big sign. Yeah. But there was a lot of turmoil inside of him and not loving himself and not loving who he was. So, um, yeah. And if you've had a suicidal thought or a plan or you've even tried, um, there's no shame in that. It's just where you were at the moment. Yeah. But when you when you love who you are, when I love who I am... I won't do anything to hurt myself. Exactly. I'm not going to do anything to hurt myself. And um, we weren't born to take our own life. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a tough one. Um, I know when my dad was in his deepest, darkest moments, he would phone me. He would sometimes phone his brother um, I'm going to kill myself. And as a, as a young, uh, young woman, I guess, I think it was in my thirties. I didn't but you don't need to hear that anyways. No. Um, no. but not understanding at the time, you know, his completely understanding his addiction and that fact that he doesn't love himself. I mean, what I know now, we always say that, um, yeah, you just, yeah okay, what do you, I don't know what else to do, right? You feel, what else are you going to do? Yeah, and for some people, it's, it's their, they see that as the only way out mm -hmm. of whatever the situation. Exactly. Now, I did my own research on this, <clears throat> but um, 
I ask my audiences and my clients to answer two questions. Number one, had they ever been, had they ever thought about taking their life? Yes or no. And number two, had they ever been sexually assaulted as a young person or teenager? And they would just put it on a little piece of paper. Yes, no. They didn't have to write their names or anything. And I collected, I don't know, probably 500 of those. Because at the time, it was before COVID, and I was doing a lot of conference, speaking at conferences. And what I discovered was, if I had been sexually assaulted as a child, I may or may not think about suicide. Interesting. Okay. But if I did have suicide ideation, nine out of ten had been sexually assaulted. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you see, that happens because, of course, when you've been sexually assaulted, we need to do a show on sexual abuse, too. Okay. When you've been sexually assaulted, you, um, whatever little bit of self-worth you had left is gone yeah. then and there. In other words, that ability to love ourself is over because that's what does it to us at the end of the day yeah. <clears throat> as children because we have no way of defending ourselves or anything. Exactly. Yeah. And as far as trauma goes, that's like, that's huge. So that's huge. Yeah. Really huge. Yeah. Uh, I remember having 10 young men at the lodge when we had our retreat center. All 10 of them had thought about taking their life. Six of them had a plan. Mm. No, excuse me. Eight of them had a plan. And six of them had actually tried gun, knife, rope, pills. Right. So I think it's a lot, the statistics are a lot higher than we know. And we know even now from COVID that the rates have skyrocketed as well. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. And our good friend Doug Smith shared with me that the trajectory of that we're not even going to see the peak of it until March of next year. Oh my. Yeah. It's still, it's still rising, rising, and then it's going to crash. Uh, it's going to reach that, that, that critical. Critical mass mass. there. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it's not even here yet. Jeez. So the mental health system better get ready. Cause they're yeah. going to be, gonna be busier. Yeah. <laughs> get yourself together. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, This one, I think, would also play into the suicidal thoughts. I believe I do not matter to others. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. What do people care about me? Um, You know, big one. I have felt that way many times. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So do you want to just run down that list uh, quickly again in case there's any other thoughts that get triggered for us? Mm-hmm. And then we got two left. Oh, I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. Did I we want to we finish? Done. Oh, yeah. No, we got a couple left. So okay. I am unable to accept blessings or gifts or opportunities. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, that would be a big one. Somebody invites you somewhere or somebody wants to do something for you or somebody wants to support you and you go, oh, no, I'm good. That was me. <laughs> oh, no, I'm good. Yeah. I don't need your help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When in reality, yes. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And last but not least... I compare myself to others. Oh, she's prettier. She's richer. (laughs) She's thinner. (laughs) Wish I had her life. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Or she's smarter. Mm. She's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I am frequently in crisis and drama mode. Mm Mm-hmm. I need to be right. I need to be dependent on others. I have difficulty making decisions. 
I do not love myself. I find my identity in others. I am a perfectionist or an overachiever. I feel safe in hiding or being secretive. I have had suicidal thoughts, a plan or have or an action. I believe I do not matter to others. I am unable to accept blessings, gifts or opportunities, and I compare myself to others. It's the last of our list. Wow. And that's just a short list. That's 25 mm-hmm. items. Yeah. We did half last week, the other half today. Yeah. And that is just a short list of attitudes, beliefs, behaviors that are rooted in shame. So what we do is we get our clients to add them all up, the sometimes and the yes. And what was your first one, Virginia? What was the percentage? So my uh, yes out of 25 back then was 13 out of 25. Mm So 52%. And we, we had made a comment. This is not a test that you want to get a hundred percent on. No, no, no. So, um, now I didn't add them up. <laughs> That's all right. I'll give you a minute to do that. Okay. Right? <clears throat> because it'd be interesting to see. So what that means, what does that mean? Uh, Virginia's 52%. Well, what it means is that 52% of those behaviors, beliefs, attitudes were something that Virginia was practicing every day or putting yeah. out there every day. Yeah. And that is connected to, directly linked to our shame level. Feeling ashamed of who we are, what we've done, never forgiving ourselves for it, not being able to let it go. And we carry it. It's like a big bag of rocks. It's like three, It's like a suitcase with 300 pounds of rocks in it. And we carry that shame into all of our relationships, our opportunities, our connections we can hear it in our language we talk it and it's uh it's pretty uh pretty devastating then i then i realized why my friends needed knee replacements <laughs> <laughs> carrying the bag of rocks around mm-hmm. and um so the guilt guilt is about the deed you know stealing yeah. is wrong if i steal something i should feel guilty but the shame is what's imposed upon us, even parents who said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, okay, Virginia, what's the, okay. how did you do? My new score is four out of 25. Whoa. 16%. Whoa. Yes. That's <clears throat> a huge at- difference. It That's is. huge. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I love people to do that. You know, when they take our core empowerment workshop series, that's part of that workshop. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then do it at the end of the 40 workshops. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I like to go back when they're in phase four, I like them to go back and redo that. Um, They get to redo their balance wheel anyway in phase four, but Just to go back and do that. Oh my gosh. People are blown away. Because Because I haven't. What did we say? The first one was July, 2022, July 27th, 2022 is when we did the first one. Oh, wow. Yeah. So two years ago. Wow. Almost exactly two years ago. Wow. So how do you feel about the progress? (laughs) How do you feel about that progress? Oh, That gives you a good boost. That's a good boost. Adding it up and seeing my score again. That's huge. Uh-huh. That's huge. I've come a long way. And I mean, there's been a lot that's happened. <laughs> yes. Then. Yes. Um, you haven't had yeah. an easy road either. Yeah. No, that's, it, I love it. It would have been, it would have been easy for you to stay in some of those places. Exactly. Because yeah. of the situations. 
losing your dad <clears throat> and most recently your cancer, which you've shared. Yeah. Yeah. So the stronger we are emotionally, the better we handle the crises. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right? Yes. Yes. Totally. Wow. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. That's Yay. amazing. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. Well, I think that speaks volumes about our work. Oh, huge. That we do, right? Huge. Huge. Mm -hmm. Supporting yeah. people. We, we can't, we can't teach anybody anything. We can't uh, help anybody except that we can show people how to do that for themselves. And then you become your own best therapist. Exactly. Right. That's your goal. That's your end goal. That's because the these, end are, goal. these are tools you want to take with you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. It's not just about today or <clears throat> two years ago. This, this will carry you right through. You know, you, like you say, you know, my story. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If I had stayed where I was two years ago. Yeah. I bet you my score probably would have been higher, not lower. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> Kathy yeah. says, good for you, Virginia. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. There's other people here. I wonder who's here. Put your name up in the comments so we can say hello to you. Mm -hmm. There are other people watching us right now. I can always tell because it lets me know. Ha! Huh? Oh, you think you're, you're watching in secret? No, <laughs> yeah. you think you're watching in secret? Uh, no, no, we know you're here. We know you're here. We just don't know the names until you uh, put them up. You're incognito. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so now mm -hmm. the next little piece here is I'd like our viewers to think about um, a situation that occurred where you did feel guilty because you knew it was wrong. And then a situation where you were made to feel ashamed. Mm -hmm. And that usually that shame comes from unforgiveness, not being able to forgive ourselves. And other people, we want to forgive others. And we could do a whole show, Virginia. Maybe that'll be our show when you're back on your feet. Okay. Forgiveness. Ooh, that's a good <clears throat> because forgiveness is essential. Yeah. Um, right? It's right up there with the self-love. And when you love who you are, you will forgive yourself instantly. And what happens, we don't, we, because nobody ever taught us how to do that. So then we carry the guilt and we carry the shame and we bring it into all areas of our life, our health, our finances, our friends, our marriage, our parenting. It's everywhere. It's all around us. Yeah. And I see it every, uh, when I, I can just tell when I'm talking with people, that they're feeling ashamed of themselves. Hmm. And the shame comes from not being okay with the mistakes. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And that's Evolve. all part of the process. You know, we teach our kids it's okay to make mistakes. Um, how else do you learn? But yet you're right. As parents, we sit there and still judge ourselves for things we've done 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. there's. And it's often about what we haven't done. Yeah. What that we regret that what, what, you know, like I wasn't able to have my own children, but I could have adopted mm -hmm. and I never did that. And I, and I've, and I've thought about that a lot. I could have taken in foster children. I'd have been a great foster parent, mm -hmm. but I couldn't do that because I would have gotten too attached and then I wouldn't be able to let them go. Okay. So I didn't do that for that reason, but, yeah. um, you know, so I always felt badly about that. But I was uh, talking with some women the other day and they were, were crying on my shoulder about the problems they're having with their adult children. And I went, well, you know what? Maybe I need to be grateful right now. <laughs> I don't have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so it's that unforgiveness. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. I was going to say uh, it, it is important to forgive other people, but 
it's more important to forgive yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing we need to think of when you, when we talk about adults and how we were raised. I mean, our parents did the best they could with what they had at the time. That's right. So until same as us as parents or, you know, wives, until we know, you don't know. That's right. You know, and, to, and then when you do know, then it's time. Okay, now am I going to make some changes? What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. It's up exactly. to you. Yeah. Exactly. You can't keep All blaming right. people. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, you see, that's another one of the behaviors, right? Blaming mm-hmm. others. Okay, we're going to take a little 30 second break and we'll be right back to wrap up our our discussion on guilt and shame. Voice kept God in the music and means a lot to me. He showed his love to everyone and that's how love should be. He wore the crown of a comeback queen when life hit you hard. There have been another who can outshine your star. Burn that steel, turn some heads, and even slept single in a double bed. I'm on this road because of you. I'm country, but I'm not as cool. Start- Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to the Today Show or watching the Today Show. And on Mondays, Virginia and I get together and we discuss something in the area of self-improvement, self-care, um, moving forward, because that's important. And you, it's yes. hard to move forward if you don't have the right tools in your toolbox. Exactly. Yeah. Right? And that self-worth really helps. <laughs> oh, yes. That's the biggest tool of all. It and is. That's the, that's the one that's been damaged the most. Yeah. I was speaking with a client the other day and I said, we were doing another exercise and I said, you know, it's interesting that growing up, our safest environments, excuse me, our safest environments, home, school, and church, one would think those are our safest environments, but guess what, Virginia, Yeah. you know. that most of us had the greatest damage done to us either at home, Mm -hmm. at school, or in church. Yeah. So what is to be the three safest places became the three most dangerous places. Exactly. So I'd love for people to think about that. Where was the damage? What, when did it occur? Mm -hmm. Uh, Where did it occur? I'll guarantee you'll be one of those three places. And then you know where to start. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So we have to clean house. You know, we start by cleaning <laughs> cleaning this house right here. That's right. This had, this had to happen first. And it took years. It took decades. Because we didn't have the materials and the knowledge that we have today. I that know. we've created in our self-worth workshops. Yeah. We have over a thousand of them. So whatever your situation, we've probably got a workshop to cover it. <laughs> right you do absolutely absolutely yeah we yeah, got it covered you just, you just have to want to you have to want I know. to know i know and i don't understand why people don't want to because life gets a lot easier yeah so much easier <laughs> right you just you it's actually just a different outlook i mean you for me and myself in in my situations i feel like i could handle anything that throws at me. I may spend a day where, yeah, I'm going to be sad or upset or angry and rage, but I don't stay there like I used to. Right. Um, so it's huge. It's just that it's, it's almost like you always have someone backing you no matter what. And it's yourself, right? If you can't rely on yourself, then who can you rely on? Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. And we, uh, I don't know how people even think they can function without that Mm self-love. I I was there for decades. I didn't like myself and I behaved in ways that were not very fun and Mm -hmm. not very nice a lot of times. 
and, and it cost me relationships. It cost me my yeah. family. It costs so much. And that's where the guilt and shame can come into play as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So yeah, we're pretty proud of what we do and proud of our product line. And um, you know, if you're, I'm going to put my little banner up here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, on Mondays, we always do this. Uh, if you want to know more about our products, programs, and services, just email me, <clears throat> text, or call, and I'll head you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, there's, you know, Virginia, our youngest yeah. client has been six, and wow. our oldest client has been 93. Beautiful. Isn't that something wonderful? For, something for everyone. Literally right. something for everyone. Totally. We've got the cutest little kids program <laughs> and <clears throat> little children need help too. Yeah. I taught kindergarten and you know, back then I didn't know anything about self-esteem or self-worth. And if I had a little kid that was struggling with that in the classroom environment, I didn't know how to help them. Yeah. We were never taught that in my teacher training. Uh, self-esteem wasn't even a word for goodness sake. Yeah. when I was teaching school. Now you would think that would be the first thing we'd learn, right? How to fix or change or help, right? Even even now that's something that um, they've been trying to get into the schools more, even now in this day and age. Uh -huh. Yeah. Understanding that it's so important. Yeah. Uh -huh. So important. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Kathy made an interesting comment here. I'm going to put it up. Okay. She said, not everyone has a husband who kills himself. You would have thought that your love was enough. Yeah. No, no, you see, because I didn't even love me back then. Yeah. And in my situation with, <clears throat> with my dad and his alcoholism, um, you would think, yeah, you have a family. No, didn't matter. No, no. And, you know, my husband wasn't um, a drinker. He didn't, he didn't even smoke. I mean, he wasn't an addict that way. He did have a sex addiction, though. We did find that out later on. Mm. But at the time, no, nobody, anybody that looked at him would never have imagined that he could do something like that. Yeah. And it would not be, not that, um, not that everybody, like there's no uh, stereotype. I mean, when it comes to suicide, we need to do a show on that because when you think about our celebrities who've taken their own lives and yeah. yeah, he was not anybody that you would meet that you would think ever that he would even want to do something like that. Yeah. But yeah. If there's no self-love or self-worth um, it, it's not going to matter how many people love you. No, it's not. It's, no. you know, living proof. Um, yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah. So when I learned to love me, the world became a whole different place a Absolutely. whole different world a whole different but we're all busy just reacting and responding to trauma and you know that exercise we do with the bucket virginia yes um, i've started uh, and i did this on a show uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, i put a t in every one of the holes in the bucket the letter t okay because every hole in that bucket is, is a trauma. trauma that's right and by the time we're 18, we've endured a lot of trauma Yeah, that we don't even know is tra traumatic. We think if somebody's in a big car accident, that's traumatic. Exactly. No. Uh, trauma is a lot, a lot broader than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, we have a couple of minutes left. Anything um, you want to share or feed our audience? Um I just want to say thank you so much for joining us uh, and just making this today <clears> show <throat> such a successful um, adventure. It really is an adventure, you know, coming and just thank you, Lori, for having me on as your co-host on Mondays and starting the week out with a bang. <laughs> That's right. That's um, right. Some okay. stuff we talk about might be a little heavy, but we always have a good laugh and uh, uh -huh. a, a great smile for you. So, yeah, I just uh -huh. want to thank everyone for joining us. And please share, 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 like and share, share the shows, share, you know, share with your uh -huh. friends. If there's someone who you think um, could absolutely use 
what we have to offer, please send them Lori's way. Mm -hmm. It's you won't, you will never regret it. Never. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. I'm living proof. <laughs> yes, you are. We bring the, well, you know me, I'm all about evidence. Exactly. I want to see the evidence and you're yeah. the evidence. Yeah. All right. And um, the shows stream live on my Facebook page right now. We're on that page right now talking. Mm -hmm. So uh, Lori Davis, Facebook page. We're also streaming on my two YouTube channels, the disability channel. Uh, we're out there all over the place, Instagram, Twitter. So find us and uh, we're, we're there. And like Virginia said, share the show that helps to build the show. I think we're up to around 21 to 22,000 viewers Amazing. per episode these days. So that's exciting and we're growing and the show itself is growing. And I'll have some news for you about another show that we're going mm -hmm. to be doing. And, um, but it's not, it's just on the, on the hopper right now, but when it's yeah. solidified, we'll let you know all about that. And uh, with a bit of a different flavor to it. So <laughs> yes, <Spooky. laughs> it's all good. Tomorrow we welcome Dr. Ramin Modiri. He'll be here with some fun stuff for finance. Uh, last week he shared the 15 best places on the planet to live. Mm -hmm. <gasps> and Canada's not one of them and neither <laughs> is the United States. <laughs> so get out of Dodge, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the number one country to live in uh, right now is Costa Rica. Ooh, and number you. two is Portugal. And number three Ooh. is Mexico. Okay. And that's based on 12 criteria. Things like political stability, housing, health care. Uh, he does all that research and yes. uh, provided yes. us with amazing, amazing. I know. Yeah. I know. Just like a walking encyclopedia. That guy. He really is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for so much for being here. We really mm -hmm. enjoy having you each and every day. And uh, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow. So <laughs> bye for now. <laughs>